Hey everyone, and welcome to Doge's Emporium of D&D Horror Story Cringe. In today's episode, we have a tale about why it's not always a good idea to split the party, a story about a player that demands a character's hand, and more. But first, a message from Nipsey. Nipsey here, asking for you to like, comment, and subscribe. I like that. But with that said, let's get into these stories. How I Learned Don't Split the Party The Hard Way by Reddit user RyanXWanbin. I started my tabletop RPG experience about 15 years ago, starting in forum style play by post games. Old school players here might remember the MIRC days, back when it was the nicest chat interface for nerds before Discord replaced it. Combined with MIRC and a forum hosted at a website, there was a particular game I joined called Heroes of Ivalus. Thinking back on it, this was one of the most ambitious games I've ever played, and I wish I could join such a game again. It was based on Final Fantasy Tactics, considered one of the best in the series for its storytelling and unique class system. The game admins and game masters of the forum imported the rules of the video game with some additional tweaks and new classes, and made a forum game based on it. Back then, it had around 100 active users at its peak. Some people created their own kingdoms, others could go on quest as freelancers. There was an overarching big demon army plot, but you had the absolute freedom to do whatever you wanted. It was truly a fantastic game that I wish I could relive now as an adult. Unfortunately, I was a 13-year-old kid back then, and like most teenagers, I was a bit of an obnoxious one. I was the guy making stupid immature jokes in the IRC, and while I wasn't an awful that guy, the other adults who played games with me considered me that dumb kid. This may have been one of the small catalysts that led to the party split, though I probably at best share 10% of the blame. There was a quest to slay a local dragon, and I, along with three other players, signed up. A dragon in Final Fantasy Tactics is not as remotely scary as D&D dragons, but it's a tough monster to handle, certainly not something a party should be splitting to take on. The party comprised of me, a rune knight, a special class maid, basically think Gish, Eldritch Knight, a ninja, a monk, and a geomancer. From the onset, the ninja thought it would be best to head to the local library to learn about the dragon. The thief thought it would be much more simple to search the local forest. Both were abrasive characters, and both started insulting each other. My rune knight told them to stop, to which both characters, and to the amusement of the players controlling the characters, told him to shut up at the same time. Funny enough, the two players weren't hostile and angry with each other, but they were playing their characters in character, and this led to the party split with Ninja heading to the library and Monk and Geomancer heading into the forest. I decided to follow Ninja because, well, two and two, right? Nope. He yells at me to get lost. Ninja's character, to my understanding, did not fully like me as a person, so there may have been out-of-character feelings here. Regardless, my character calls him a prick and decides all he can really do is ask around town about the dragon. In retrospect, I probably should have joined the Monk and Geomancer. The Monk and Geomancer encounter the dragon in the forest, they get wiped, and the Geomancer is gobbled up while the Monk suffers enough injuries to die as well. The game used a system where every time you were downed and lost a fight, if a GM was feeling generous, he would add an injury percentage to your character rather than killing him outright. The Monk had suffered over 40% injuries that he had stacked from previous fights, that led to a death roll and him perishing. The ninja manages to find information on the dragon. He goes to the forest, gets beaten, and he gets taken back to the dragon's nest. As for myself, I found enough information asking around to get to the dragon as well, and of course, promptly lose also. To my credit, I put up a really good fight using all the potions I had bought and using my frost blades to wound the dragon. According to the GM, if I had two more turns, I could have killed the dragon myself, though I am brought back to the nest. At this point, the GM considers the quest failed. He lets the ninja and myself off the hook, seeing that the dragon's eggs had just hatched, and that it was concerned more 
with the toothless whelps than us, allowing us to at least get away. I was pretty annoyed with what had transpired, and my character basically berated the ninja, called him an absolute moron, blamed him for the deaths of the other two, and, well, told him to commit seppuku as a ninja should. The player took it kind of hard. He apologized out of character about the party split, and retired his character for a new one, as, in character, the ninja admitted that he was at fault and decided to give up adventuring because of it. My rune knight would eventually go off on another quest, suffer another injury, and die as well. What was supposed to be a very simple, easy quest, where four characters should have taken out the dragon, a quest where the dragon could have easily been found considering all three split parties got to it, and one where we could have earned a lot of gill, ended up with the eventual end of said four characters. All because we split the party. Remember, don't split the damn party. Well, I wouldn't say to never split the party. I mean, sometimes it can be beneficial when in a town or a city and doing research or some such. But always make sure to regroup before going to take on a huge monster, especially a dragon, even if the party is butting heads. A lesson that I guess all these players learned. Though, side note, I think a tabletop RPG set in Ivalis sounds dope as hell. But let's move on. It's called Warhammer, not Lovehammer. By Reddit user, Bada Bing Throwaway. About 10 years ago, around the age of 20, I used to play Warhammer 2nd Edition with some friends in person. We had done a few campaigns together, and things were generally fine. At one point, we started a new campaign. It wasn't official, so I'm not sure what the campaign itself was about, since we never got that far into it. It involved playing as a couple of merchants and their bodyguards. That much I know. Another player approached me with an idea she had, which was essentially to play as married merchants. That seemed fine with me, and we okayed it with the Game Master. I remember the first few sessions as uneventful. However, she soon started messaging me in private, outside of the table, asking to do some role-playing to get into the headspace of our characters. Nothing wrong with that, so I said sure. It turns out she wanted to do nighttime role-playing. I was a little weirded out, but being 20 and not very assertive, I played along once or twice. I was very uncomfortable the entire time, and there were some advances in person as well, including literally telling me that she wanted to do it, but I didn't bite. Soon afterwards, I moved away, and as far as I know, the group split up. Though, you want to know the worst part? The Game Master was her husband, who was the brother of my fairly recent ex-girlfriend, who played at the same table. It turns out they had an open relationship kind of deal, and decided to make a campaign to root me into that. Yeah, that is a bit cringe. I mean, I don't have anything against people who are in an open or poly relationship. I mean, adults can do whatever in regards to relationships, in my opinion. But why not just ask a person if they are interested in that? Why go through all the trouble of making a tabletop RPG with the sole purpose of trying to lure a person in? That's just freaking creepy. It's a good thing OP got away from all that, as that type of behavior is nowhere near functional. Let's move on. Gay Romance Obsessed Player Thinks She's Entitled to My Straight Character By Reddit user JoJo's Bizarre Throwaway The cast includes Me, yours truly, playing a straight human cleric Problem Player, playing a gay half-elf bard DM, you know the drill Plus his DMPC, a bi-pan human warlock bard Both players so, me and the other player, are women, which I fear is important to know here. Plus, she and the DM had been friends for over a decade, which might be the reason this went on and on for so long as it has. So, let's get into it. The campaign is set in your typical high fantasy setting, and most of the core group meets up in a tavern. The group dynamic is great. There's some roleplay happening right off the bat, and we're having a fun time getting into our first mystery to solve in the town that we're staying in. By now, it's become clear that my cleric and the bard are the only male members of the party, 
and since the bard is your typical pretty, arrogant, very, very gay bard, he starts hitting on my cleric immediately. Now, my cleric is not only straight as an arrow, but also a recent widower. He lost his wife maybe six weeks ago, and is very obviously not in a place to deal with this. He's refusing to sleep, he hasn't bathed in a while, and he's often absent-minded. Despite all that, the bard continues to go after him. He doesn't seem to want to engage with the plot at all, and my personal highlight of that first session is Player B asking me to make an insight check, to see if the cleric is gay. After the first few sessions, the player contacts me to ask about my character. I thought it was genuine interest, and happily answered her. She voiced that she'd like a romance for her character, and was wondering what my character's sexuality really was, and if there was a chance for them to be together. I answered truthfully that I didn't design him to have a romance in game, as he had already had a wife, and a son for that matter, and his story is about healing and moving on, hence the cleric. But there was no harm in being a little flirty around him, right? It seemed fun at first. The others enjoyed their typical bard and his fun side quest, so I said sure. My character was pretty oblivious to romance, since he hasn't had a date in a long time, and since he grew up very sheltered, he was completely new to any other sexual orientation besides his own. So these two became a running gag of the campaign, and we all knew that it wasn't going to happen. Except, the other player really, really wanted it to. She demanded that it would. She had commissions drawn of both of them together. She wrote sexual stories about them. She would ask about my character's kinks, his previous sex life, and constantly begged to talk about the pairing. After every session, she would whine about how despite me telling her it was okay that the bard flirted with him, my character didn't engage in it at all and how she thought they were headed for a romance. In all fairness, I indulged her because I still thought it was really cool how interested she was in my character's development, and I enjoyed talking about him. I wrote stories too, though not with the same explicit content, and also made art. After I had told her that no, the cleric would probably not have a relationship with the bard right off the bat, but if they were ever to date, it would be the slowest slow burn romance in the history of slow burn. She was thrilled, only to yell at me after the very next session about how my character was still not flirting back, and how I disappointed her and am massively ruining her fun. Probably the biggest red flag waved in my face right then, but again, I was oblivious to it and ended up explaining the character concept again and apologizing that it would take time, both for my character to work through his grief and to discover a different sexuality than he believed he had. The story went on. The others were still fun to roleplay with, and the bard seemed to not be as flirty with the cleric as he was in the beginning, so they actually became friends. Somewhat. Enter the Warlock Bard, where things go downhill fast. So this DM NPC was an important character from another player's background, and connected to another one as well. He traveled with the party for a while, and it turns out that he was pretty similar in nature to the bard. He was also hitting on pretty much everyone, and was maybe even more arrogant than the bard, as pretty as he was, and, well, also partially a bard. To say that the other player hated this character's guts is an understatement. With another man in the party, there were a lot of roleplay moments between just the three of us, where the bard would constantly try to mark his territory and all the flirty behavior from the beginning came back, but worse. He would brag about having known my character longer and being friends with him, and how he had tried everything before and it didn't work, so the warlock shouldn't bother. Now, imagine that player's outrage when my character actually formed a really close bond with the DM NPC. The difference was that both the DM and I knew that there wasn't any romance happening, ever and this DM NPC's flirting was a quirk, not his entire personality. He actually had character that didn't revolve around his sexuality, and that was the polar opposite of my cleric's, which gave me great chance at developing my character more, as he challenged his morals, his perception of the world, and most importantly, his grief. The bard, on the other side, 
had never even bothered to ask my cleric about his wife. When the party was staying in another tavern, they split into two rooms, one for the ladies, one for the men, and the men's room only had two beds. Cheap, I know, but genuinely fun back then. The bard, of course, insisted that the cleric shares a bed with him, despite him immediately offering to sleep on the ground. It went on and on, with the bard becoming increasingly more irritated and almost ordering my character around, claiming that there's only one sensible choice here, until I finally had enough. I described how my character went over to the warlock's bed, and the whole group was dying from laughter. Now, this was also one of the first sessions we played live, so I sat right next to that player when this happened, and I still haven't forgotten the way she stared at me. Afterwards, back to online sessions and chatting again, all hell broke loose. She went off on me about how I had betrayed her, how I told her my character wasn't into men, why on earth is he this close to the DMNPC after all the work she had put in, and how dare I. This was the first time I really started to realize how much Bard had frustrated me with her vision of her beloved pairing. And I wish I could give you a happy ending to this, but the truth is that the game went on, with me mostly focusing on the stuff I enjoyed and trying to ignore the stuff I didn't. There were still moments where that player would throw a fit when my character and the DM NPC had solo roleplay moments, and in the end, after me approaching the DM with this issue, he decided to give her the romance she so desired through an NPC specifically for that purpose. Now, a quarter of our playtime was dedicated to that player living her romance fantasy, including fully roleplayed date nights, and Bard would pick up writing and commissioning art again. The game didn't last much longer after that, but we would continue to play other campaigns together, mostly because she was a package deal with the other people I cared about. She was definitely the worst problem player I ever had to deal with, and in hindsight, this first experience in a game with her wasn't even the worst thing she would do, but it was the creepiest for sure. Oh, except that one time in my campaign where she wanted me to play out a pedo-grooming relationship between a 30-ish year old man and her 15-year-old character, because love, I guess. Where, as it turns out, she didn't even intend for this man to be a pedo despite writing in his backstory that he was physically attracted to a young boy, and regrets not showing him the ropes. But that's a story for another time. Until then. It seems like the bard player didn't really want D&D to be a game of a group of adventurers going out and doing heroic things, but rather wanted to use it as an outlet to live out her fantasies. The moment when OP first said that she didn't want an in-game romance for her character that should have been it. But I will also say that stating that there could be a possibility was probably a wrong move, and put it into the bard player's mind that there was a chance, thus that was the only thing she focused on. At least the DM put in an NPC that could be an outlet for bard's BS, but he shouldn't have let the third of game time go into it. But as stated, bard and DM are longtime friends. And then there is the cliffhanger for the other story that OP mentioned, which, that is a huge WTF. But we will have to wait to hear that story until tomorrow, since it will be Friday, and I think we'll need our Friday glory story as a palate cleanser after that tale. So that will do it for today. As always, I appreciate all of you, and I hope your games remain horror story free. Until next time.